Hello everybody, this is Professor Triplett, and welcome. This is in the beginning of geometric modeling, so I wanted to go over a couple base things. Um, this object right here, I just took about an hour to uh, build and record a tutorial on me building it. Now, I don't go through step by step every little thing that I'm doing in the tutorial, so if you're looking for watching something to see exactly how I built this, it's not going to lay out every step but what i do lay out is my technique for coming up with the answer to making this and i think in a, in the beginning it's good to just sit there and watch that um i would suggest if you decide to watch the videos i'll put them up uh after this video but uh like you could watch them at 1.5 speed or something like that just to kind of get the gist of what i'm doing um anyway but i just have some notes of what i want to go over about this so um so kind of wrote out my speech here <laughs> before going forward into modeling beyond basics uh i want to talk about concepts that seem to get you know that get overcomplicated by beginners many modelers start off their modeling approach in a way that overcomplicates simple things okay so um model the logical pieces that make up an object rather than trying to model an object all as one piece okay i see this all the time and I don't know where people come up with it. Um, I mean, it, it, sometimes it makes sense, but uh, here's my point. All right, so let's look at the original reference here. So we have this um, we have this dresser, okay? Um, and the dresser is basically, and it's like an Ikea thing or something, it's basically made up of boards. And if anybody's put together an Ikea, dresser they know that you know you got all these boards and these little pegs and a few little tools it comes with and terrible directions and you got to go ahead and just kind of hack your way through it till you get it all together hopefully you put it on the right way you know everything on the right way and it works okay so but everything's just boards and nuts and screws and little handles and stuff like that it's all really fairly simple um what i notice is people start modeling and they'll learn how to do certain things <clears throat> uh, certain tools like extrude and cut and you know stuff there's just different tools that you guys are going to get into and you'll find or what I'll find is that um, people will be trying to like basically cut a hole in a block and then they'll try to like extrude a handle out of the block and I look at that and I say why didn't you just build a block and then build a handle as a separate piece and then just put the handle sitting on the face of the block and people are like well I didn't think about it that way well that's why I'm coming early and telling you that's how you would build that um, you don't need to like in this case you can see this is this handle is obviously a separate material from the block the block is some you know cheap wood and the handles made out of metal uh, maybe so uh, the idea is is that if you know you obviously usually wouldn't need to cut a hole in here and have screws in it that's silly because you know no one's ever going to see that so if all you're going to see is the um the handle and the block and it's going to be closed like you see here uh all you need to do is model those pieces place them on there so you'd only have to model one handle and then duplicate it around and then you'd have to model all you know all the separate blocks but a lot of this stuff is all duplicate so one two three four five of these pieces are all duplicate and they're just boards right so let's go ahead and just look at the model really quick so we can kind of get the idea about what i'm talking about okay so i built this this block right here and then i just duplicated it up a bunch of times if i pull this block out if i move it around let's just move it out there um you can see it's just empty inside it's not attached to anything and um you know there's just a handle sitting on front okay and and that will do um the one thing i i did do is i put a little piece in here because otherwise you can kind of see through the spaces and you shouldn't be able to see that because again if you go to the reference you'll notice there's these little boards here and that's what the um that's where where the uh shelves basically or uh, dresser or drawers i should say they basically hit these little boards right here uh that are going in between that holds the structure together so anyway um let's put that back around so those are all separate pieces this is a separate piece um there's a back piece on here that's a separate piece 
that's just like that little thin backing that's just a box that's thin here's another box um, and I purposely use a dresser like this because it's literally just pretty much all done in boxes now if you needed to you could build the interior uh, if necessary um, and in that case you know obviously you'd have it'd be kind of the same thing as you'd have these little boxes um, extending back and then the only thing that maybe you'd want to make is the railing uh, as a separate piece or something like that so that that railing doesn't need to be cut into this it just could be this extra separate piece that's sticking off to the side uh, if you want to get super detailed and you need like little screws going into the holes or something like that then you can model like a little head of a screw but you don't need to model the whole screw if you're not going to see the whole screw so um, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at with this is that just model what you need um, model it in pieces don't try to model it all out of one piece um, there are there are sometimes complex models where you do need to model it out of one piece but this is typically you're not going to get into that too much in this class if you do we'll cross that bridge uh, and we'll talk about how you do that um, okay what else what other topics okay so let's see here um, always get reference well what do you know um, I've got that reference that I pulled up you know you want to have good reference I even have the size and that's a really good thing because the next thing I have is um, model object as close to real world size as possible you may need to look up measurements okay when I looked up this dresser drawer I found the measurements on the website so it was nice and I basically just dialed that in um, I went into convert converted it from uh, centimeters to or I should say inches to centimeters because Maya is in centimeters so all of my dimensions um, in Maya when I initially built it were blocked out uh, correctly so I know that if I build this to, spe to to the right size and I build a bed frame to the right size and I build you know a doorway to the right size and I put them all it's all in one room everything's gonna look like it works together because they're all the right size as far as relation to each other it's not like I'm gonna have a dresser that's like really tiny and a chair that's really big and you know you, you don't want to look like you're in Alice in Wonderland world unless you're in Alice in Wonderland world if that makes sense okay what else what's the next one let's see here um, so for any complex object um, you want to box it out first with the proper proportions so um, that goes on to what I was just saying and for that I have like a I made a extra group here and I have this this base cube here which I think I have it hidden but if I pull it up and we look at it where is that thing there it is um, if I look at I dialed in the original dimensions so this was just a cube and cubes have uh, primitive like status where you can dial in the width the height and the depth and it will mat it will actually make it that size in the real world um, this is like the X this is the Y this is the Z so um, and then I did split it because uh, when I do symmetry stuff it works better if it's split on the X if you're using the X symmetry anyway uh, going off track there but the point is is that try to build to the real world size try to dial that in at first try to box it out so that you know that your proportions are going to be correct so uh, in this case I just needed this box I didn't need to box out everything I just needed the main first one um, okay what else let's see here model in the center of the world and symmetrical if possible not all models are symmetrical so you can't always make everything symmetrical but um, but if you can you know like try to mirror things try to just build one side sometimes you have models that are four sides uh, are, are the same so you can actually build just like one quarter of the model and then you just mirror it over twice um, that happens a lot when I'm modeling um, so um, just as an example let me go ahead and uh, move this back hide it all right, so here's my grid, and you can see the center line of the grid goes exactly center line through this object. Um, that's important. Now, in the first assignment, we block out an environment, and I have you move like the blocks in different areas. 
that's fine, but you would take those blocks and still like if you're going to build an object that was going to move to where the blocks were, you would you would build it in the center of the world and then move it after you're done building it. So that's basically how you would do that. So just make sure you keep that in mind. You want to try to build things in the center of the world and use symmetry as much as possible. It makes your job easier. And what else? I got a couple more. Um, so in live action film, animation, uh, game cutscenes, if a camera is established and you won't see certain details of a model, then you don't need to model it. Um, there are exceptions to this, but the point is, is that if you're in a situation where you know that there's, I don't know, like uh, you're modeling, I'm trying to think of a good situation, you're modeling a house and you're only going to see the house from one angle um, and you got to get the job done, you want to do as fast as you can. If you're never going to see the back of the house, then you don't need to model the whole back side of the house. I guess that, that's the point. Now here's the exceptions. Uh, in VFX, um, when you destroy objects, you have to have like the layers. So in other words, if you're doing like a brick wall, you have to have brick, you have to have mortar, you have to have like um, what would be behind the bricks, like the structure, if it's like wood beams or something like that, that kind of stuff needs to come out in the destruction so that it looks realistic. If it's just bricks and there's no mortar or anything like that, it's gonna look fake. Um, in game modeling, if the object has physics on it, uh, then the object might be kicked around in a level or something like that and you may have to see it from all different angles or you may have to be able to see it from all different angles to be con convincing and live in the game world so in those cases you know you'd have to model the whole object every single side um, you know if it's easy to create the whole object if it just makes it simpler and it doesn't take a lot more time then sure model the whole object it doesn't matter uh, that way if you know the director changes their mind they can look at it from a different angle but the if it's you know something big like a house or like a you know something that's very intricate then you don't build stuff that you're not going to see let's just put it that way um oh here's this is a really important one build with your objects oriented in the right direction so um if you look at this model the Z direction is like the front facing direction. That's what faces the camera. So the blue arrow points in the Z direction. If you look here, this little, this is called a gnomon. This little gnomon over here, um, the Z is pointing in this direction. It matches this world direction and the Y is pointing up and the X is pointing this way. That way, like if you dial these settings in, um, like I'm like I was showing in that box uh, everything will be correct as far as like uh, the different uh, the different viewports so if I, I'm in my perspective right now and of course I know I'm looking at the front because I can see the nomen but if I go into my front view I should be looking at the front if I go into my right view I should be looking at the right side uh, left view top view Th this makes my life a lot easier and organized and um, it's just important it's makes makes things much better so um, if you have an object that doesn't quite have a front um, try to make a logical choice to what you would think the front would be uh, and and that's about it I think that for now that's it for this video I just wanted to go over uh, a few ground rules going forward things to keep in mind that are going to make your life a lot easier but that number one thing that I want to go over again is model in logical pieces don't think that you have to model like everything out of one piece okay I see a time and time again where people are just struggling to model something so just take that in mind I want you guys to do well and I don't want you to be massively frustrated so that's just a word to the wise all right thanks for watching and happy modeling